Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video today. I apologize for the backlog of those other three videos and it took a while to get those uh, completed and ready to get posted, but um, already on to the next video. Uh, in this one, I am going to start getting the different hydraulic components ready to be plumbed in here and um, get all of the hydraulic circuitry uh, ready. So. What I have here is all of the fittings that are going to be required to get everything set up. Um, one thing I've learned through past experiences working on different hydraulic systems is uh, it's easiest to get the same type of hose uh, made up. So all of the different components on the Mini Snowcat use just slightly different style uh, fittings. So the pumps pumps all use what I would say is the best type of fitting maybe not for serviceability but definitely for a seal and that would be the o-ring boss uh, it's a straight cut thread and the sealing is accomplished with an o-ring um, this provides a really excellent um, connection but uh, any time that you assemble and disassemble a hose uh, it's it's tough to maneuver and you risk damaging the o-ring usually it does get damaged so the next best uh, fitting type would be the 37 degree flare this just uh, uses two uh, machined surfaces uh, to mate and it forms a really excellent seal and these fittings are really easy to put on and take off you basically hand tighten them give them a little tighten with the wrenches and you have uh, a fluid tight fitting there. So the pumps um, all have the o-ring boss. I'm going to adapt them to use the 37 degree. The motors on the other hand use possibly the worst fitting uh, in my opinion. And that's the NPT National Pipe Daper. This is junk they are a pain in the butt to get to seal properly you have to load them up with Teflon tape and you have to reef them down to a million pounds to get a, a seal on them but unfortunately the motors that I had chosen uh, were really only available with the NPT so I'm gonna adapt it to a more friendly fitting the 37 degree flare and then the hoses from the pump to the motor will all be 37 degree flare, really easy to work with. Um, and then basically the same story for everything else, uh, O-ring boss to the flare fitting for the auxiliary pump, and then um, the reservoir and the pump uh, inlet and return, those are all O-ring boss. I'm gonna convert those to connect with 37 degree flare also. So all of the connections will be really easy to install and remove. No worries about leaks. You just tighten it down and it's good to go. So that's um, basically what I'm going to be working on today. I'm going to get all of these adapter fittings installed on the different components in the snowcat. And then I'm going to start to measure out uh, how long the hoses are going to have to be to get to the pumps. Uh, and the motors and the reservoir and this upcoming week I'll head off to get those uh, those lines fabricated Okay, so I've got all the um, fittings in. Now, uh, everything from here forward is going to be 37 degree flare connectors. In terms to measuring the hydraulic hoses, I found that 
the only way you can really determine the correct length of a hose is to use a piece of hose to estimate how long it needs to be and then take a measurement of that. Um, it works to a degree. Um, the point of fault with that is that if you use a regular garden hose or something, it does not reproduce the bend radius of a hydraulic hose. Uh, a one wire hose is gonna have a pretty, pretty stiff bend radius. A two wire is gonna be even harder to make those bends. So what you might think is possible with uh, a different hose, a rubber hose, might not be possible with a hydraulic hose. So in the end, what I've done is just amassed a pile of different sizes of hoses. And uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll use these to mock up and measure uh, everything that I'm going to need. Unfortunately, um, these also have that 90 degree uh, fitting uh, crimped on the end, so it gives me a really good idea of how um, the routing is going to look when it's done. So that's what I'm going to work on now. Okay, so I've uh, gotten all of the hoses I need measured up. A couple things to point out here. Uh, the nice thing about adapting to the 37 degree flare, you have a couple different fittings available. So there's the straight fitting that I'd installed there. And you do have the option to use a 90. This is a tight 90. Or another option is to attach a swivel 90 onto the straight, which kind of stands it off a little bit further. So depending on how close or far you need to be away from something, you can use that combination of um, fittings. So for example, here, um, if I use the straight and this uh, swivel 90, and I bring it down on a sweep, I can actually get past that uh, piece of angle there and loop around to the reservoir. Here, on the other hand, it needed to be pretty tight because the engine's gonna be right there. So the swivel and the straight probably wouldn't work out as nicely as just a tight 90. Um, I could just have the fitting crimped right onto the hose, but um, if you have two of the 90 degree fittings uh, installed on a hose, you have to remember that there is no twist or torsion um, in that in that hose because it's so reinforced with the steel wires and everything so if you get one end connected and then you need to twist the other one it's not quite lined up right not going to happen so it's usually a good bet to have a combination of 190 uh, crimped on and then the other one is just a straight and then if you really need to use one of those other two 90 degree fittings to, to make it happen. But that'll give you flexibility to tighten it on and not run into any problems. So anyway, I've uh, made a couple messes here. Some oil leaked out of a hose there and some oil leaked out of a hose there. And we're already starting to make a mess. We haven't even opened a jug of hydraulic fluid yet. But um, yeah, the next step is to go and get those hoses all fabricated and get them installed. All right guys, got a pile of hoses made up. Uh, I'm gonna start to get these installed onto the machine and um, yeah, that should be able to complete most of the drive system. So yeah, I'm not gonna say how much they were. They weren't cheap. It's uh, one thing's for sure, but um, yeah. You want to do a hydrostatic drive? Well, you got to pay the price. Okay, everything's in place now. So I've got the two lines going to each hydraulic motor. Those come from the hydraulic 
pumps. Those 45s are very nice. Lots of clearance here for things to move. Same on the other side. Uh, I've got the two lines that go uh, from the hydraulic pumps back to the reservoir. These two here are the feeds to the pumps. So those come around and I used some of these uh, 90 degree O-ring to flare fittings on each of them. It keeps it nice and tight uh, to the back of the pumps. And then I did find these longer um, versions of those 90s that just stand this out a little bit and make it possible to get to get that hose down and around that piece of angle there. Last piece, um, well, fittings that I'm missing actually are these 90s here. And what I'm going to try and do is um, these are actually O-ring dash four, so they're even smaller than the rest. I need to find an O-ring four uh, that will go to a three eighths flare fitting, and then it's gonna do basically what this 90 here is doing. It's gonna loop up and then come back down into there. And that should relieve most of the stresses on the hose. But uh, that'll be another trip to the store. Anyway, that's uh, about all there is for now on uh, getting this all set up. So, yeah, watch it.